Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome. I'm Thomas Manton IV, God's prophet to the nations and your success strategist. I have a very strong message in my spirit today, and uh, I've been feeling a heavy prophetic flow for many nations, many regions, and I may get into that. It may just flow, but I have a specific word from the Lord that I want to teach, and it's entitled... The power of procreative speech. I'll say it again. The power of procreative speech. That's powerful. Yesterday, the Lord spoke to me a word to to deliver this word as a prophecy. And of course, I was under a heavy prophetic flow uh, also for Africa, Europe, many nations. And you can watch that. It's entitled, uh, Tell the Future What You Want. Now, this is kind of a... A continuation from that with a different title, and I'm going to go into a different thing. I, I'm not against doing, you know, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven. All the children go to heaven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the children go to heaven. Remember that old song? But if that's the way the Lord did, but I, I think it's much more exciting to have a new title for a new day. His mercies are new every morning. His revelation is new every day. And aren't you happy that I got right into it? You know, all this fluffing around and beating around the bush. Who has time? Because I teach for so many minutes anyway. You know, I'm not going to do the three-minute segment right now. Hello, here I am. Watch me on this broadcast. And I believe in promos. And, of course, we're going to do a lot of that. Not being advised to do some of that. And I'm for it. I could take the advice. Hey, let's do it. Especially like Instagram, you do your short little, you know, one-liner, two-liner, three-liner thoughts. Fine, fine. Short little quip for the clip for the people that are in a quick hurry. No problem. I love when God rolls. God's a roller. You know, he's a, he's a mover. He's quick. He's sharp. He's powerful. He's not into... Uh, you know, taking forever to do a thing to, that just should, should take a few minutes. Don't you hate it when somebody's so slow that they just keep you stuck in, and, and, and in, uh, you know, a modality of, of uh, slowness? And I, I, don't you hate that? I always say anything that slows you down is most often of the devil. Slowness is not of God. I was trying a few minutes ago to relay a point about quickness to someone and they didn't get it at all. Because they're they're stuck, you know, thinking about arguing about something else, which is really not relevant to the point I was making. So I think, wow, I just have to keep moving, keep flowing, keep searching, keep researching, get the best solutions to get what we need done. Let me tell you, Satan fell like lightning when God kicked him out. Jesus, God... And the Holy Spirit were able to cast them out like lightning. Pew, split second. You ever see a lightning flash? Pew, pew. It's like kind of frizzle, frazzles for a minute. <laughs> and then it's like that. It goes down, vibrates a little bit, pew, pew, and it's gone. And that thing had so much power in it. My God, you, you don't want to be in the way of that. And that's how, think, think about that when you think about Getting something done in your life. At least make it a desire. You might say, well, you know, not everybody's that quick. What, why do you want to stick up for slowness? I, this is good. It's not on my notes, but it feels good. Here we go. Holy, the Holy Spirit's talking here. Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and, and uh, incorporated, in, you know, personified. Here we go. Why do you want to stick up for slowness and stick up for something else and stick up for a different point than the one that's being made? The point to make in life, here's a success strategy. Here's a success key right here. Here it is. A success formulation, a success formula. Here it is. You just want to get the thing done. It's not about emotions. That, you know, I, don't, I don't mean to, you know, to uh, 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 take any, derive any, any, um, Analogy from the world, but it may, maybe if it, it, it could help you to understand. There was a song that said, what's love got to do with it? I don't know what she was talking about. All right, but I'm not talking about any of that. But I'm just saying, you know, we, we talk about love. We talk about 
grace and we talk about things in the church, but there's a modality in the realm of business that's almost, it has to be almost like robotic. You understand? You just have to desire to get the thing done. Stop the drama. No emotion. It's not about emotion and all that. God bless you. I see all the green boxes and the purple hearts flying. You're match- hey, you're matching my shirt. Who's doing that? Today the hearts are purple on uh, Periscope, eh? Wow. Did you do that for moi? Praise God. Some usually they're red or they're green. Today the hearts are purple. Is this technology or is this prophetic or this is just a, a creative miracle? I don't know. The hearts coming up in purple. Keep hitting them purple hearts. I love it. Purple hearts. Whoa. It's matching my decor here. I don't know. And praise God. And diamonds are always in vogue. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. They're everybody's best friend except for the, the, the mess that went on. You know, the conflict diamonds and blood diamonds. and But that's not anybody's fault that wants one. It's the fault of the people that when they were surrounded by that, they were greedy men and murder, ravenous killers and all that going on. So please, let's not feel too bad about that, you know? Diamonds are diamonds, rubies are rubies, rubies are red, violets are blue, and I love you. <laughs> Praise God. So let's not get too bent about how it came, you know? I I feel that a lot, and I want to teach that to you as a success key, as a success strategy, as a business principle. Get your emotions out of the way. Get all this mama drama, papa drama, baby drama, middle-aged drama, teenage drama. Get it all out of the way. Ooh, out. Cuando uco. In Swahili and Kenya, you know, people in Kenya laugh right now. Kwanduko means get out of here, man. Go away. Tokahapa. That means hit the road and go. Split, man. Get away from me. Potea. I said potea means worthless, you know. I think. I'm, my, my, my Swahili, I'm, I must be coming to Kenya soon or something. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, my Swahili's coming back on me now. And, my, and the, the Shang and the... <laughs> Which is a slang part of the language, you know, some common words, you know. You got to tell the devil. You got to tell slowness. You got to tell everything that's like blocking the way out. Get out, out, out. I only want to get a job done. I only want to get a project done. I only want to get the thing done. I'm responsible to God to do his will. He has a commission and a plan for me. I got to get on with his program. I got to move. I got to shake. I got to get it done. I got to shake and bake and I got to get it done. I got to I got to shake this thing up, cook it right, marinate it right, put the sauce on it, make it delicious, serve it to the world. We have a mission to accomplish. You have a mission to accomplish and you have to stop wasting time. I'm glad it's happened to me and I wish it happened to me when I was really young. But it didn't. I wish it happened to me when I when I, I think I'm okay now. Thank you, Lord. I was I wish it happened to me when I was young, but it didn't. I wish that when I was 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, 25, even 30, even more than that, that I just valued, wanted to squeeze the life of, out of every second. But younger people, unless you, listen, the training factor is really important in this. You got to understand something. I, I spoke in a conference, uh, uh, well, several, I've speak in many conferences. But I spoke in a certain conference and I tailgated on something I learned in the last one before that. And I executed some of the things that I learned on how to, you know, flow in the protocol of the previous one. And it really was a blessing to them. So I, even brilliant moi, who's traveled around the world and preached to multitudes of countless multitudes around the planet on TV, radio, revivals, open air crusades, church services packed with thousands, open air crusades. We had as many as 50,000 people in an outdoor gathering, even more than that. And uh, church services with a thousands, 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 media, radio. One prophecy over an election in a nation uh, got, four, got me four million hits on my website in a short time. So you start to add up numbers like that and how many people and visitors and wah, wah, wah. And uh, all, all of the media and all of the 
satellites throughout Africa and Europe that I've been on that you can never count how many people actually were, were viewing. But, you know, estimation, you could say it goes to the seven figures of people. So after all of that, I could still learn more. You could still learn more no matter what you do. So it really depends, especially when you're young. You have to uh, have a mentor. You have to be trained. It's better that you be trained because you'll be so much better than somebody else. You know, there's something about the wilderness, a wilderness type speaker, someone who's out there. Let me say something. Who's out there and doing, and they, they haven't quite perfected the game of like being excellent in their delivery and their speech and their mechanism and operational function. In, in a certain setting with very high level leaders and all that, and they're a bit rough and they kind of, and they're good and they're anointed and they're called of God, but they haven't had that refining touch. And, and, but some of these same people, let me tell you, if you told them that, if you tried to correct them on that or tried to teach them on that, they might want to rip your head, they might want to bark at you and say, I don't need that. I, the Holy Ghost is on me. You know, I'm just unconventional. I'm just all out there. I'm like, okay, good, oh, good, good, good. But certain places you won't function very well, you know, and the Lord is, uh, is very concerned about our level of where we're at, but I have to tell you something I've learned. A lot of it has to do with our training. We're in training for reigning. Anywhere you can get refined, put up to a higher level to be a better speaker, you need to. Another thing I tried to deal with and correct and didn't get a lot of, uh, response well in this particular one because of the cultural divide hey i see all you green somebody type a message and say hi to me praise the lord write write me and tell me where you're watching from and i want to tell you something that's a protocol here on on this purple hearts thank you do some more i love those let them keep flying just keep come on work the thing work the thing and uh protocol that we have here i I speak a prophetic blessing and I pray blessing, empowerment, new anointing, greater anointing, finance, breakthrough, connections, promotion, open doors, more riches, more uh, uh, favor, more things over the people that interact and correspond with me. So if I were you, I would write, amen, thank you, prophet, thank you, doctor, nice to see you, I'm watching from Nairobi, I'm watching from Fiji Islands, I'm watching from Australia, I'm watching from Korea, I'm watching from, we have people from all over the planet Earth, but you got to say something, so go ahead and do it, even in the replay, on my, I found that on the public figure page, it doesn't work because that's not where it, that's not where it originated from, so if you want to write a comment, you got to be in the original post place, you know what, you can discover these things, on Facebook, you'd have to be on Facebook.com, Thomas Manton, not Dr. Thomas Manton, if you want to make a comment. you got to go back to my personal page, scroll down through all the beautiful colors and things of uh, recipes and health things and beautiful animals and colorful things that I put in between the posts. But on the public figure page, Facebook.com, Dr. Thomas Manton, Dr. Thomas Manton, you'll find just the ministry posts alone. But on the replays of those, you cannot put a comment. I tried. You can try and let me know. But I tried to write to to respond to people on that forum. And I realized it's probably probably because it was not on the original format of where it was posted from. So you got to be on the original page, which is my personal page. I tried doing it from the public figure page, which I probably should go back to doing that and then sharing it with the other pages. But the, the audience seems to have gravitated to my, to my uh, personal page more. We have like 5,000 max, maxed out completely, 5,000 people in the friends. And I think almost 7,000 followers on top of that, that's 12,000 people. And then on the per public figure page, maybe we have about 4,000 something going on, 5,000 uh, people trekking on that one. But it's not like we're conversing a lot with people on that page. So I need help in that area to get over more to that. Or we just switch, try to switch, you know. I tried to do a switch of the personal one and ditto it into a, copy it into a uh, public figure page. And it's just sitting there and it's got about 5,000 people in it. But it's almost 5,000 people, high 4,000, 4,800, 4,700, something like that. And uh, 
it, it, it's a public figure page, but it's just a copy of the personal page. And I thought, thank, and the guy was telling me that is this and this and this, and he was wrong. And I thought, what if he had changed it over and I couldn't get it back? I nearly, you know, I had a moment. I was like, what? I said, my, my personal page is still there, right? Oh, yes, yeah. So you would get it to show me. So on the personal page on Facebook.com, you know, I don't like saying the two words that people call that thing. I don't like saying those two words because they're not good words. The power of procreative speech. I'm in the message. Here we go. Never say anything about yourself that's negative, number one. Number two, never speak anything that you do not want to happen. Anything that you don't want to happen, anything that you do not want to see happen, don't say anything about it except something positive. Yesterday in the message, tell, your fu- tell the future what you want. I said, tell your future. I originally thought that. But I changed it to tell the future because your future has not been set in stone. We're not robots. We can create things by our faith. We can create things prophetically. And that's the power of, pro- of procreative uh, realms of the miraculous. It's causing things to happen new that hadn't happened before. So we can't just say, tell your future, because if you say, tell your future what you want, it's like the future's already there, and it can say yes or no. Or you can't have that, or you can have this. Nonsense. It's all by our faith. So I, I, I gave it a little bit of deep thought to, for that for a couple of minutes. And I said, no, the title is, Tell the Future What You Want Out of It. Because we have the power to procreate. If you want to say your, that means it's like it's already set. You can't make anything new happen. Nonsense. And I'm telling you, it, it's crazy that we didn't learn this when we were little. And that, you know, we, so, and, and some, some people would say, well, we had teachers, we had mentors, we had some teachers, we had pastors. But I don't know how many people were listening or if we all were listening well enough to what we were learning because we still thought we had more time, more time, more time, more time, more later, more later, more later. You get to a certain age, you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, uh-oh, 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 bridge out. Beep, beep, beep. More than that, like, boom, train horn. You know, like supersonic, kaboom. Like, wake up and change everything. There's certain things you, you just can't tolerate. Slowness and possibilities of things not happening. And also mistakes. There has to be perfection. And you know, when people come your way, let me say this, when you're training somebody, when people come your way, you know, it's all like lovey-dovey at first. Oh, you know, I'm not talking about relationship. I'm talking about work, business. People that want to work for you or work with you or something on a project. You, you, uh, you know, it's all like, well, hallelujah, they're just getting into it. They're going, wow, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. And then when they see after it, it takes probably a couple of weeks, a few weeks. Yeah, and, and you see like, uh, look, even the markers are purple on this periscope. Maybe you saw my shirt and changed the color just for me. I don't know. This is wild. I've never seen it. The purple and purple hearts. Give me some more purple hearts, Periscopians. Woo, thank you. And you on Facebook, please write where you're watching from and anything you'd like to say as long as it's positive because if you're crazy, you know what we're going to do. You know? Kwaheri. Kwaheri. In Swahili means bye-bye. I was in a resort place on the beach preaching on the Indian Ocean and these two girls came over and they were sitting, I was having a cappuccino and they sat at the next table and they looked me up and down, handsome, man, handsome white man, you know, and they were like, they were like Jumbo, you know, Jumbo, I could feel what their Jumbo meant. And I said, Quaheri. <laughs> they said Jumbo, I said Quaheri. And they went, hmm. They got like, hmm. They did that with their shoulder. Hmm. Ladies in Kenya, they'll do that. Hmm. I was like, yeah, you got me right. I'm not interested in that. I'm drinking my coffee here. I'm praising God and worshiping him. I have no interest in, in, uh, in you uh, uh, at this time. And maybe, maybe never. Don't, don't get into my flow and break my focus. Total focus is the order of the day. Total focus is the order of the day. I love it when you're like you're living a holy life. I am before the Lord, a holy life, not doing anything, any of that funny business, not into it, have no time for secular, secular worldly things, garbage. I don't fool it. I am seven days a week 
just trying to get the work done that I'm supposed to be doing and, and how painful it is when you don't have enough help and enough people. I heard the Lord say, and I'm saying this by the Holy Ghost. I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, there's someone out there in the world that has a great prop, great property and others, even the same one or maybe others also, probably others too, who have a great pieces of, of treasure and money that the Lord is going to sovereignly visit you and deal with you to communicate with me and to get it into my hands. And I am going to appropriate that to do the work to reach millions of people with the word of the Lord across the nations and the continents of the earth. Oh, I'm excited. I'm doing it now. I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. But man, we need to see where I can see a bunch of children that have a need and I just, you know, and somewhere else and somewhere else and do them simultaneously. I want to do it more. I want to do it a lot. I want to do it every day. I want to make the world a better place to live because I'm here. Okay, I'm talking to the future right now because that's a future moment that's not too far away. And God is dealing with uh, uh, people in his own way about that in Jesus' name. So you can private inbox me on Facebook if that's you or you're feeling inclined in that area. And God is going to make sure that you hear my voice and are touched by this anointing. You're going to obey him and the, the, the kingdom projects are going to be expanded all the more. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to pray right now. I feel, I feel, this is a friend of mine playing a song. Listen to this. Let me just play it in the background. I just continue to just flow here. Amen. I didn't even get to my notes in my book. I have so many things, but I just want to pray. I may do that a bit, but I want to, I want to pray right now. The Lord is touching people. I, I felt today also that today that there's going to be a, a tremendous wave of deliverance coming across the mind and the soul. Even the woundedness, even the battles and the troubles that you've had. The Lord says, I'm taking them and changing them and chasing them away. And the tiredness and the attack and the warfare. It's like Isaiah 40 when the prophet Isaiah said, the Lord said, tell my people. Uh, and comfort them and tell them their warfare has ended. Warfare over situations, oppression over situations and in situations and circumstances and wrong environments and wrong people, wrong effects of adversities and evil things and evil people and demonic things is coming to an end in your life, my friend. The Lord is breaking that cord, breaking it, breaking it, breaking it right now in the name of Jesus. And you're going to see his touch and his favor. And I see the Lord healing someone in their knees, someone in their back, someone in their shoulders, someone in their, in their elbows, someone in their bones and their feet. You're having a hard time walking because your feet, your bones and your feet, you got so much pain. Even in the fascia tissue, even in the ligaments and the tendons and the blood vessels and circulation, just so many things out of whack. Uh, it could be arthritic also in some of the bones. And let you see this healing of bone. Just receive it right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Whoa, hallelujah, I feel it. The power of God is just coming like lightning, like fire. Where it is right now. I heard something snap right there. Just something got adjusted. Something got adjusted. Somebody got an adjustment. I don't know if it's in your back, your shoulder, your legs, wherever. But the Lord wants you to have total li liquidity, movement, fluidity, movement, movement. And not constriction and, 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 and tightness and pain. Oh Lord, oil the bones, oil the, the joints, let the balm of Gilead flow. Also the Bible says a broken heart makes the heart sick. Lack of hope can damage your health. The Lord says, I'm touching you. And your warfare is coming to an end. And the treasure that's been hidden, I want to say that again. Yes Lord, the Lord's reminded me, the hidden treasure money that you needed money that you have a mission for money that you need to take care of things for yourself and also for in your life the lord's going to bring to you and you're going to see change share 
change is coming right now. A whole new season is opening and erupting for you. God says I'm repositioning and I'm relocating. Woo, I'm relocating. I'm relocating the place of movement, the place of operation. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a place. I'm going to give you a space. I'm going to give you a new grace. I'm going to give you a place so that you can run the race. But even in a specific place, says the Lord. And you're going to see it now. Woo! Play that thing. A new place, a new space, a new grace to run the race. It's come forth for you now, says the Lord. Get ready. This 30-day cycle between now and to the next month, I just see like another four week, like a four week cycle, 30 days from today. Just a, a, a flowing and a, a movement and a reverberation and a, an increase. A tremendous movement to establish everything that you've been longing to see. And the people that you waited for, they're gonna come to you supernaturally. And you're not going to be like lost, lonely, sad, depressed, tossed and turned, feeling your esteem for your own life and yourself has been marred and damaged by waiting so long and for seeming, a seeming lack of answers to the things that you wanted. And the Lord says, get ready now, my chosen son. Get ready now, my chosen daughter. Get ready now, my vessel. For I'm going to raise you. I'm going to plant you. I'm going to put you. I'm going to establish you. I'm going to create a new platform for you. And God says, I'm going to open up a place for you. There's a, a specific place. A place of grace. A new place. New face. New faces. And you're going to see it now. And God says, I'm going to plant you there. I'm going to put you there. I'm going to establish the work. Oh, God, it's, it, this is in business. This is also in ministry. This is also in uh, a planting of the Lord. You know, the Bible says we don't even, we're not even to plant ourselves in the kingdom, in the body, but he plants us where he wants us to be. But I see for many a season is changing. And I've been talking out of, out, of, out of experience and feeling this burden and this burning passion to tell the people of God around the world that, hey, Everything you've been doing is not getting it. When you don't feel satisfied. Whoa! When you don't feel like you've accomplished anything. When you lay down at night and you're still tossing and turning because your day has not been a fulfilling day. That's a place of misfunction and dysfunction. And not the place of operation that I've ordained for you, says the Lord. And God says, now I'm taking you to a new space, a new place, a new grace. And I'm going to set up a place. <laughs> And I'm going to set it up that you can run your race. And people are going to be there. A new face. A new face. A new face. A new face. An entire new image. An entire new season. A new stamp. Even a new brand. Even a new logo. Even a new name. Or the name, but enhanced to a higher dimension. Something new. Something new. Something fresh. Something you've not seen before. The Lord says, get ready now. Because in this season, I'm just fixing it all up. And people, even from around the planet, can get to know you somehow. They're getting to know me somehow. We're connecting with a lot of people. I've, I've known countless thousands of people, you know, personally as acquaintances and some as friends around the world for many, many years. But I'm just seeing something new happening, you know. It's just, it's just a new thing, a new thing, a new thing, a new thing, a new thing. The Lord says... In Isaiah 43, 19, I'm going to do a new thing. Shall it not spring forth? And the 18th verse, the verse before that said, He said, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Because now I'm going to do a new thing, says the Lord. And you're going to see my hand. You're going to see a new place with new grace. A new face. Even myself and how you see me and how you know me and relate to me. It's even going to get enhanced and increased, says the Lord. And you're going to know that I am your God. I love the scripture that says, I'm going to do this all for you. Why? So that you'll know that I am the Lord and beside me there's none other. 
Numbers 23, 19 said, I'm not a man that I would lie. Oh, my, 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 my. My, my, my. I'm not a man that I would lie, nor the son of man that I need to change my mind or repent about anything. You got to get to that place. I was talking about before, so there's, there's power and confidence that comes to a life when you know you're living right and you're doing your best. I'm doing that. I, 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 when you know you're living right and you're doing your best, you're doing your best. I mean, you're avoiding things that are not right. You don't, the little foxes that spoil the vine and it's, the sins that so easily beset people, they're, they're, they're not a part of your deal, not a part of my deal. And then like God is resident with you all the time, all the day. I have to tell you, it's worth it to pay that price just for that realm of glory that he can, he could just do anything at any moment because he can trust you. He trusts you with your integrity, with your holiness. Hmm? And he says, well, now I can give you everything else. And he said, it's freely for me to give. And he said, uh, uh, how it's my good pleasure to even give you all things freely and even the kingdom to enjoy. Fambore taka che la. Personal visitations are coming. New epiphanies, new awakenings, new revivals, new, just a swift move suddenly is going to come by the Holy Spirit to touch you and bring a personal visitation to you. And you're going to see me, says the Lord. You're going to see me and I'm going to give you new instructions and I'm changing the season. The way things that have been going, just in the routine and the rigmarole and the... Uh, you know, rigor moro is almost like the word rigor mortis. It's like the same rigor more, more, rigor moro. It's like stuck, dead, same routine. You see how the words are kind of similar? Rigor mortis is when the body gets stiff after it's dead. Rigor moro, rigor mortis. You see, rigor moro, rigor mortis. That rigor moro. Oh, it's not good. Status quo also can be sometimes a realm of routine that's good. But some of it that's just boring. It keeps you stuck. God's exciting. There's a big world out there. That's why I love to post things and reprint pictures to show people the beauty of God's creations, the mountains, the birds, the animals. And you know what it you know what it's like to, to see those things in pic, picture form, but maybe even face to face and go to new places and new lands and new places and new cities and new nations. See new people. It's a big world out there. So don't ever think that everything was pre-programmed and pre-planned just to be on a low level. God wants you to break through with the power of your own words, the power of procreative speech. Woo! Rashti Karabahata. If you say it, you will see it. And confession brings possession. And what you speak will actually put you under or over, depending on what it is. Also, be very careful about your environment. Be very careful about your environment and the people that you're with. Because, because they can take you out to sea to a dangerous place. Or they can take you into a, to the safe harbor of the beach where there's safety, depending on which way they're going. Friends can be like a wave. Environment can be like a wave. It could take you out to a perilous place or it can bring you into a safe place. You need an environment where there's also productivity. Let's just not, let make, make, just let, let's not just make peace our only goal or joy or feeling a little bit okay or having a reasonably decent day our goal. That's a low goal. But let's push like Paul said, I'm pressing to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus on the high road. And I'm looking like Isaiah 43, 20 said after those two great verses. Remember not the former things, 18. I'm going to do a new thing, 19. 20, I'm going to make rivers to run, even in the wilderness, even in the desert, even in a dry place, even in a place where uh, there was no flowing of anything. Remember Ezekiel 37, when he told the prophet, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, you know, Lord. And he watched as they came up. He was supposed to prophesy to all of that. Please write me where you're 
watching from and anything you'd like to say. If you want to have any specific prayer requests, you can private inbox me. And I know these medias have choked the traffic somehow. They seem to want to do that. It's very wicked. Because I'm used to seeing like the spinning of people. And it seems like there's been a, a chokehold put on some of these feeds. Many people have also told me that it's happened to them. And that's just not right. So God is going to raise up neutral places, other places. Let me not say too much about that. But I just want to tell you prophetically. That the, the speech that God wants us to give is never going to be curtailed in Jesus' name. Put away lying lips. Never lie to another. Speak truth one to another. Ephesians 4, 22 to 32. Those 10 verses, you can read that. Here's a, here's a good one. Never ask someone a question if they do not know the answer. Never ask someone a question if they do not know the answer. In other words, don't take, seek counsel from a person who can't help you. Wow, that's pretty good, isn't it? Answer not a fool lest you become like him. We need to speak well of each other also. Be careful. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say it. Unless you, you know, have a point to make with someone that a point needs to be made. I had a conversation with someone today, another servant of God, and we both were on the same page with something. So God had me air a little grievance I have or bad feeling like to make a shift about something and with a certain environment certain things and and they were ex absolutely in the same frame of mind so like that was like a, a locating of our connection that we're in the same we we have a platform there we're whew, you know something we're launching for many other engagements and events in the world and it just needed to be said that we feel the same because sometimes you think well, I'm not a part of this, but are you? And then the person's like, no, I feel the same thing. I'm out there in the mission. I'm like, I am too. I'm out there. So we, we got more connected. Now they could have, we had a kind of a location there thing. That wasn't negative. That was positive. But you just be strong enough not to say certain things. All right? Don't air your grievances. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me one time. He said, son, complaining is the road to hell. I was complaining about something. He said, son, complaining is not the road toward me. It's the road away from me. Stop the complaining and just praise me. And now that I look back, it was so many years ago when the Lord spoke that to me, I don't even remember what I was complaining about. The trial came to an end. You know, trials are temporary. They have expiration, state, ex expiration dates. Trials are temporary. They have expiration dates. Wow. So confession brings possession. Yeah, I want to say this. You frame the world. You frame your world. Yep. By the words of your mouth. You frame your world by the words of your mouth. So let's speak what's right. Some key. Uh, let's see if I have another one. Yeah, wisdom knows when to speak and when to be silent. There's like, knowledge knows what to say, but wisdom knows when to say it. At the right time, in the right setting. So like, you know, get your, get your sensitivity and your maturity level up. And when someone says, hey, this is where I'm at, meet them where they're at and try to take them even higher. Here's, here's a seed that you can sow every day. You want to produce harvest by sowing seed a seed is anything you have anything no matter what category or department it, it's in that enhances the life of another huh? anything you have that enhances the life of another Anything that enhances the life of another, when you give it, that's a seed. And when you plant it, God will surely give you a harvest back. Ephesians 6, 8 says something so powerful. It says, whatever good you do for another, God will do back for you. Doesn't necessarily mean that they'll do good for you, the person that you gave it to. A lot of times they don't. I've, how, many, how many have experienced that? You've experienced that, haven't you? You treated someone real well and they treated you really, really badly. And they certainly didn't reciprocate the good that you, you did for them. 
But the Lord took notes and he had his angels watching. Oh, this is powerful. I want someone to write that on the screen if you can. Or just write it somewhere. Make a mental note of this. Ephesians 6, 8. Whatever I do good for another, God sees it and he's going to make sure it's done back for me. Probably even through a stranger, maybe someone you've never met. Imagine. The Lord has people out there. And that's why it's so important that you need to get your gifting and your talent out, exposed, and blessing, and helping, and advancing, and increasing, and solving problems for as many people as possible. Because you, don't, you just don't know. And I heard a man of God say one time, he says, he learned a lesson by becoming pretty famous. He says, I just smile at everybody. Even if they look untoward, even if they're looking at me funny, I just smile and smile, hello, hallelujah, I'm be polite and kind. Because he says, you just never know who people are. You just never know what they're going to do. That's good. So you want to be real careful with that, all right? This is the, one of the laws of life. If you try to correct a foolish person, they can get mad at you. I was talking about that. You can't correct everybody. Wisdom knows when to speak. Knowledge knows the answer. But wisdom tells you when to administer the dose and to input it, to give it. A person who argues all the time isn't wise. Sometimes you just got to stop and slow down. Then you also need to surround yourself with people can, can, can hear and, and comprehend and understand. I was talking about when someone comes to work for you. I didn't finish the point. When someone comes to work for you, at first it's like, la, 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 praise the Lord, ha, ha, ha. You know, you know, we're all saved and we're doing God's work, you know. But then after a while, they see your intensity. Sometimes I'm just like, okay, I'm like, it's like clockwork. Okay, now we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. And somebody kept asking me, like, how was your day? And it was irritating me. Excuse me, I'm not trying, please don't take this. That I'm, it's not, I'm not trying to be rude. I wouldn't do that. But I, was, I, just, I just thought about it from a wisdom success factor. You know, kind of put this, the rose glasses or the success glasses on and the wisdom glasses on. And I thought, what difference does it make? It only matters what we're doing now. But a lot of people don't get that. They want to take time chit-chatting. Hello, how are you? Ha ha. That's fine. That's cultural and all that. But when you get when you get to the point of being busy, you're right in it, man. Like, no. Okay, you don't care about that. Here's the point. First, it starts in you. <laughs> this is funny. First, it starts in you. You don't care. What does it matter how the earlier part of the day was? I talked about this before. Cut the days up into segments. You could have a horrible morning, a mediocre afternoon, a great late afternoon, and a really greater night. You can have a great morning, and it's something you feel. And sometimes your body and your mind and your emotions, even your health, you're just going through these swings. You may feel tired one part of the day. Next part of the day, all of a sudden, you get energized. You know something I did is I started taking these... Uh, how could I say this? Some, some people may not understand this. From a nutritional doctor, okay? They have a certain kind of treatment. I'm not going to tell the whole story. But it gives you like magnesium, C, all the B vitamins and something else. And it's directly administered. Uh, 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 and, and I'm telling you, I took that for three days. I was like bouncing off the... I had got such a boost of energy. And I needed that. Sometimes you have these energy swings. So the, here's what I'm saying. There's a supplemental answer. There's a health answer. There's a nutritional answer to get yourself to your optimum best. But I've had days where I felt just absolutely exhausted. You know? And then all of a sudden, the later part of the day, it was like it was a different day. So I'm like, now, if we get stuck in the, in the, in the cycle of the waking hours, this is wisdom talking here, and you say, well, how was your day? It doesn't. Which day? I'm living four days in one day. This morning was, if you really want me to take time to explain it, I really don't have the time. I want to get on with our work and our program. But if you want me to explain it, this morning was pretty rough. Afternoon was, uh. Then I had this a uh, uh, little bit of a swing. And then another day, I, maybe I had a real energetic morning. And then, and then I might have just like had all kinds of things going on in the day. And then like the night, like it's like it became a new day. If you want to ask me how was your day, I want to say which one. <laughs> I got another one to match today. See the here's the purple. This is the jungle juice from Brazil. 
the Akai Berry, Sam Bazan from the Amazon. All my Brazilian warriors, shout hallelujah. This is good stuff. Oh, this is this is like liquid, liquid vitamin, liquid life. I love it. Success. Here we go. Procreative speech gets you somewhere, and then it's easier to become successful than to stay successful. Wow, you have to do a lot. And true success at the end of it all is going is, is to hear the Lord say to us, "Well done, well done, my servant." That's the greatest success. That can ever happen. Thank you, Lord, for that. It's coming in that day. Here's another thing. You must have a palace from which to rule. Where is it? If you're a man, you're a king. If you're a woman or a queen, where's your palace? It's okay to be gifted, but you also have to have a space. And I want to go back to what I was prophesying a few moments ago. There is a, a new space, a new place, a new grace to help you run the race, this is a prophetic word, that God's going to establish, and you're going to have a very, very strong place of operation. And that's for business people, that's for ministers, that's for preachers, that's for ministries, and that's for people that are also uh, uh, in, in a realm of sales or in a realm of whatever you do for, uh, in the realm of your employment. Something great, something new. You're not, you're not going to be stuck in a, in a situation where you're just bottled up and you can't move. You're like stuck. The rigmarole, as I was saying. No rigor mortis. Okay, if you want divine success, proclaim the solution, not the problem. And stop rehashing your problems and start rehearsing some solutions. And to be great, I want to stop, I have more, but to be great, you have to work hard. I have a question. Are you hard at work or hardly at work? <laughs> you like that one? How are you doing? Are you hard at work or are you hardly at work? The only place work, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary, S before W. But in life, it only comes after diligent work. So I'm praying, I'm praying that God is going to um, just light your torch, set you ablaze with his spirit and his fire, his energy, his gifting, his power, his anointing, so that you can do all you can to just jump into a new phase. That's why you need a prophet in your life. You need the prophet to speak, and here I am. You need the prophet to speak, you need a mentor, you need a teacher, you need a pastor, you need a coach, you need a leader, you need someone to train you, help you, raise you up. Speak these procreative, miraculous words into your mind and spirit and heart, into your ears, to your eyes, and you need to see, and you need to hear, and you need to understand that where you've been is not where it's at. That's not where it's going to end. And some of you, some people have been feeling despair and just really depressed and really have had a lot of problems. And I want to say this, whatever the source of those issues are, be removed in Jesus' name. This is a day of deliverance. I heard the Lord say that clearly. This is a day of deliverance for you. And you're not going to be there, stuck like that anymore. <sighs> Father, things that are beyond words, Things that are beyond words is what we need to also hear in the spirit realm. That we can come to understand. I'm, I'm seeing a vision right now. I've been seeing I've been seeing this. I'm seeing the Lord standing with a rod in his hand for some, with a scroll in his hand for another, for others. Pointing like a like the rod in a direction for others. It's like the power of, of, of the staff, you know, in his hand. It can be like a scroll, it can be like a a, a, a place of a power and authority that he's giving to people. But it could also be pointed as a directional thing. And I see this middle of the year here right now, this month we're in. This 30-day cycle from now, becoming like a a place where the Lord is just giving. He's just giving a new 
dispensation, a new epiphany, a new outpouring, a new realm of revelation, a new realm of revival and visitation of people. Man, I feel this. And I re we receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the clearest of direction. And if there are to be any wrong decisions made by anyone, any one of us, Lord, please, I beg you, stop it before it happens. I declare and I prophesy that no misfortune, no wrong moves, no trusting of the wrong people, no believing any lies, no falling into anybody's deception for any of you that are with me. It can't happen. God is going to step in and get in the way because I've spoken it. Now, sometimes we don't speak and we don't seek counsel and we don't hear and we don't move and things happen that are pr problematic. But we can't forget the scripture in Proverbs that says, uh, in the multitude of counsels, there's safety. So when you embark on something and you believe what somebody and you want, you want to keep quiet and you don't want to talk to other people, that's a mistake and you can lose. And as I've been saying, kind of like in a joking way, I, don't you just wish we, we don't, don't, can't you just wish that if we had a time capsule or a time travel portal and we can just go back and stand back before certain events that happened that were adverse or things that happened and went wrong and you just make all new decisions because you replay it in your head anyway. Because hindsight is 2020. It's four kinds of sight. There's foresight, there's insight, there's uh, hindsight, and there's another one I can't remember what the name of it is right now. But let's say those three. Insight, foresight, hindsight. Hindsight is when you're looking back on something that's already happened, and that vision is always 2020. Because you can see perfectly because the thing happened, and you, it's just like that. You see it. Foresight is when you can see ahead, but insight is when you can see into a matter. And I pray an anointing is just coming and being released upon people, especially leaders, especially people that have to make serious decisions that really mean something. You can't miss. You can't miss. You can't afford even a, a day's diversion in the wrong way or anything that's going to take you in the wrong way or anything that's going to rob you of anything you have or steal or, or, you, or bring a loss to you. And let me tell you, there are people that are, have offended servants of the Lord by stealing from them. Let me say this publicly to the whole world over the airwaves. God's judgment is upon you that have done that. And you've made the biggest mistake of your life. You've committed suicide yourself. And whatever comes to you, you can't blame to anyone. We don't have to curse. We don't have to speak. You know, private prayers have already been done over a long time. Don't have to even air them out or share them publicly. We don't have to speak in any adverse way, like as if we're upset or irritated or anything. No. We just say the law of God is the law of God. And, and what people have done to themselves by doing evil acts, they have literally taken the position of suicide. And whatever comes to them, They've done it to themselves. No blame to anyone. The devastation that people have done to hurt anointings and to hurt true good people is just, you know, you, you use the word satanic or demonic, but it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Because the human factor is involved. But God's judgment is upon those that have done evil. Psalm 105.15 says, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. What you did will happen to you and more. And what the pain and the damage that people have caused to real good, really good people, they're going to pay for that. And what you got was not worth it. Oh, you say you were crazy, or the devil tempted you, or what? Stop. Stop speaking. Take your, take your own poison. Take your own deal. You've done it unto the Lord. And God is the master and he's a repay. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I will repay. That's it. So I have to, I have to say that because some people have been through some horrific things. And boy, I know. Man, I know it. Some people have been through some horrific things. 
and only God can fix. But here's the way God uh, reimburses and replenishes and multiplies and reconciles and restores and restitutes and revives and reforms and re revolves and brings a revolution. That's a good little seminar on the R words there, isn't it? He, uh, he gives you back, even multiplied, even more. Remember Job? Job went through trouble. Woo-wee, he went through trouble. And then he uh, got back double for his trouble. Lived another 165 years, had a whole other family. He says his daughters were the most beautiful in the world. And he was given multiplied billions of dollars worth of stuff. More of his animals, the camels alone could have been worth in the billions. 6,000 prized camels, 6,000 of them. My God. My God. 6,000 of them. Can you imagine? So I want to, I, I, I trust you're encouraged. I know you are. I, I, I just want to say, God bless you and raise you and give you grace for this season. You're going to see his hand. You're going to see his hand. You're going to see his hand. And those that fought you, they've fought God. Those that hurt you, they've hurt, they've, they've come against God. They're going to, don't worry about it. Trust him now for the harvest and the increase. Do all you can to sow, sow seed, sow seed, connect. Ooh, Instagram has... Instagram. Your time limit is laborious. <clears throat> Instagram is back. Thomas Manton the fourth here. I have to tell you that uh, you need to to put yourself in a position to receive everything that God has. And just not stop. Just not uh, let anything hold you back now. You got to sow seed. You got to make sure you're following the biblical economics laws. You got to make sure you're following your obedience to heaven's instructions. You have to really get into it because this is the day of the repositioning and you're going to see it. You are going to see it. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. That's the word of the Lord. In fact, I think I want to put that in the title, the day of the repositioning. That's whew, that's a fresh word. That's what's on right now. I'm glad I put Instagram back on. Round two. Instagram is funny. It only keeps up for 24 hours, and I don't quite know how to get even there and share the link. I'm, I'll figure it out. Uh, Facebook, we have a lot of people checking with us. Periscope's coming. We want to just really, really blast it out. My goal is not just to have, you know, a few thousand people, one, but I'd like to have a few hundred thousand people trekking with us all over the world. It's going to get there just one day at a time. Boop, 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 boop. It's beating. The, the drum is beating. The heart is beating. We're going to touch the known world through the television. I'm not here by chance. The Lord spoke to me and said, son, I want you on television. There are people in the television industry. You might see this, that I'm doing this with phones and a, one camera and say, hey, can we get you on the airways? Can we do some programs? I like what you're saying. I like how you teach and flow. And we could have segmented time and all that and really hit it and really produce it well. And uh, we're going there. We'll do it. I've done it before. We're going to do it. We're going to keep doing it even in higher levels than we've done before. And uh, the nations of the world and multitudes of people are waiting for us and waiting for the voice. The voice of the prophet is very, very crucial and vital and powerful and important and needed in the lives of the people. So this is the day of the repositioning. The day of the repositioning. That's the, that's the word of the Lord. And we're going to see new grace, new favor, new blessing, a, a new structure made with a new grace in a new place, in a new face and new faces to help us run the race in that place that we, 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 we've been ordained to be in, in business, in ministry. In life, in career, God is raising you up. It's the day of the repositioning, says the Lord. God bless you. I'm Thomas Manton IV. My website is thomasmanton.com. Those of you in Kenya want to use the m -Pace, so the number's on the top of the Facebook page. If you want it, you can uh, private inbox me and I'll, I'll type it out to you again. And every person, even in the replay, I want you to write a note 
say hello, put a happy face, put a check mark, put a thumbs up, write a scripture, repeat something I've said. If you have prayer requests, you can also private inbox me. Anybody that I hear from in any communication, I'm going to speak a blessing over your life for something new to happen. And also right where you're watching from. And uh, love to know you all over the world. I'd love to see you face to face when I can. But we're here face to face now here in this uh, forum, forum and portal portals. And I just uh, just so privileged and feel so blessed to be uh, an oracle of God to come to speak to you and a teacher and a trainer and a friend and a prophet. To, and a lover and a pastor to you to help you in your life assignment. And this is the day of the repositioning. This cycle and season right now, God is birthing a new season for you, and you're going to see it. Manifestations. Write me the testimonies. I've released the word. I'm releasing the grace and the anointing for this behind this. God is going to do that himself, and we're going to see the outpouring of power to get its position in, in a place where everything's flourishing. And people you've not known before, I'm prophesying, are going to come to meet you. People that you've been waiting to see, you never met them before. You didn't know them, but you're going to find them and they're going to find you. And they're also going to be some of the best people you've ever met in your life. Because God has positioned you for this day. And he's positioned them and you're going to make that connection together. In Jesus' name. New connections, new relationships, new covenant things. The Lord bless you. Get ready for it to happen. And I want to hear from you what's going on with this thing. And everybody that's, again, that's communicating with me in any way, I'm going to speak a blessing. You can sow a seed, the tithes, the offerings, the seeds, the alms, the first fruits on thomasmanton.com. T H O M A S M A N T O N dot com. And the place to sow and donate and give there is there. And you can do that. You can do that now. And also in Kenya by M Pesa. And the number's at the top of the Facebook page. Or you can just write me a note if you need that number. And you can sow there. And the Lord bless you richly. Looking forward to hearing from you. I'm going to be praying for you. And I'll see you right here on the next broadcast. I love you so much in Jesus' name. Have a great, 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 great and powerful day in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you.